Hey guys, moving on to the coordinate plane, relations and functions. This is some, um, some kind of algebra light here. I know we take pre-algebra, but this is the stuff you learn in Algebra 1 as well. I'll turn this music down a little bit, it's a little bit too loud. Um, and so this is vocabulary heavy and, um, and um, not as concept heavy, mostly vocabulary heavy. So there's a lot of terms you're going to need to know within this video. Please make sure you write down all definitions, um, and I'll make sure I try to indicate to you which words you need. So we're looking at the coordinate plane. We're going to look at identifying functions. We're going to look at graphing a function rule. Start with the coordinate plane. You do need to know that your coordinate plane has an x-axis and a y-axis. Your x-axis is the horizontal, your y-axis is the vertical. The origin is the ordered pair 0, 0. The origin is the ordered pair 0, 0. Nee, 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 nee. Um, and we know that that's right there. And we have four quadrants, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. And they often use Roman numerals to number them, but you don't have to. If you draw yourself a C, you always know what order to um, number the quadrants in. 1, 2, 3, 4, around the C. The x-coordinates and y-coordinates make up ordered pairs. You can see the ordered pair for B up there is negative 3, 4. And remember how we do, um, how we do that, how we graph that. We're going to be working with that. Um, as I was saying, sorry I got interrupted. I apologize for the editing jump. When you're graphing an ordered pair, you have your ordered pair, negative 3, 4. You're going to start at the origin. You're going to do the um, x um, direction first. That's your first coordinate. So negative 3 means left 3. Positive right, negative left. So left 3. A positive 4 then means um, up 4. For the y-axis, it's down negative, up positive. So negative 3, 4, and there's the point B, identified by the ordered pair negative 3, 4. You're going to be practicing graphing in class. Okay, more definitions. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. Could be any old set of ordered pairs. Um, they're given to you as a table or um, just a list or whatever. The domain is all the x's. It's the set of all the x values. So if I took all the x coordinates out and put them in their own little group, that would be the domain. It's also called the input. And sounds similar to science, it's also called the independent variable, which we'll talk about more later. The range is the set of all the y values. So if you took all the y coordinates out and you put them in one group together, that would be the range. That's the output. So you put in the x and out comes the y, or the output. And that's the dependent variable. A function is a relation, a specific kind of relation, where each input has exactly one output, where no matter what number you put in, um, that number only has one different number coming out for it, that you can't put in a one and get out two different numbers. Okay, so when we talk about input and output, we can express a function, uh, a relation or a function as a table, a graph, or as a function rule, which is an equation. So I can have a set of ordered pairs and graph them, and that's a relation. If none of the x values repeat, if all the inputs have exactly one output, it's a function. A table would show it in x, y format, in just like a list, and then a function rule is an equation that relates x and y together. Let's um, start with understanding whether or not we're looking at a function. So let's start with just um, how do I tell whether a set of ordered pairs is a function. Gosh, so many interruptions this morning. I apologize for yet another editing jump. Um, so is the relation a function? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at just that definition. A function is where the x's are individual and they don't repeat. So to tell if a relation is a function, using a table or a list, a table over here or just a list of ordered pairs, we're going to examine the domain. Those are the x values. That's the input. So we got to look at the x's. Are there duplicate numbers? So let's look at this first one. 5, 6, 7, 8. No duplicates. No duplicate x values. Duplicate x values. So that means that we are definitely dealing with, it should be a u, huh, uh, definitely dealing with something that is a function. Okay. How about this next one? Let's look at this next one. Well, we got 1, 6, 3, eh, 1 duplicate x value. Okay, the number one is used twice as an x value, not a function. Not a function. What about from a graph? 
To tell if a relation is a function from a graph, you can use something called the vertical line test. So this is kind of cool. This is actually really um, convenient um, because what you do is you take a vertical line. Oh, moving the wrong image here. You take a vertical line, and if you sweep it across the relation, and there's no place where it touches two points on the same vertical line. See, only touching one, only touching one, 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 one. Only touching one point all the way across, so we're good. It does not touch any two points at one time because if a vertical line touches two points at one time, look down here at this example right there, okay, that vertical line right there touches two points, this one and this one. That means they share an X value. If they share an X value, they don't make that definition of a function. So this is not a function. And the easy visual way to do it is to use our little vertical line test. So let me get my vertical line here. Oh, I'm using the wrong tool, hold on. Let me get my vertical line. Da, 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 da. And again, I can say eh, touches two points on that relation, so that one's not a function. What about this one? Nope, we're good, it's a straight line. It's a diagonal line, but it's a straight line, and it's definitely not going to be having any x values that repeat. What about this one? Eh, that one fails all the way across, doesn't it? Because there's lots and lots of x values that have two different y values, so that fails. What about this one? That one passes. That's called a parabola, that last one. Okay, so to go back and recap, this one was a yes, this one was a no, and this one was a yes. So again, we're looking at just definitions. So understand the definition, apply the definition, all I'm asking you to do for right now. Okay, when you have a linear equation, it's an equation with two variables whose graph is a straight line. So if the x and y values are plotted on, uh, plotted, if we plot them on a graph, we get a straight line. The variables in a linear, linear equation are usually x and y. y can be replaced by f of x, which stands for function of x. To evaluate a function, we're going to plug the given values in for x. Okay, plug in the given values for x. So this is a function. So we read this, when we say this, we say f of x is negative 2x plus 4. So I do want you to actually write in quotation marks next to your f of x. Because that's actually how we say it. Okay, um, so when we're finding finding f of 1, that means take 1 and put it in for x. So f, f of 1 would be negative 2 times 1 plus 4. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So f of 1 would equal 2. f of negative 2, again, means take the negative 2 and put it in for x. So that would be negative 2 times negative 2, or 4. And 4 plus 4 would be 8. So f of negative 2 would be 8 f of one half. Again, put the one half in for x. Negative two times a half is negative one. Negative one plus four is three. So f of one half would be three. So we evaluate a function by plugging in the given value they want me to find for the x. That's all that means. And finally, graphing a function rule. So we can plug in values for x, and that's actually how you're going to graph a function rule, and you're going to get it onto the coordinate plane. Now, we're going to look at some real-world applications where this could represent something that's actually happening. I'm not going to give you an example for this one. We'll talk about that in class. But um, I want you to notice that the, um, the function rule that's here, we can make a table. We can plug in our values for x to find our y values. And I like to make my table like this. You can, of course, make it in any variety of ways as long as you understand the outcome of the table. But I like to make my table like this. This is a little messy, so I'm going to rewrite it while I'm telling you why. Because then I actually have the ordered pairs written down, and I'm less likely to make a mistake graphing. So I'm going to pick x values. I'm going to start by picking um, negative 1. We'll pick negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and let's do 3. Okay, so let's start by plugging in negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, plus 4 is 6. So negative 1, 6, which just barely fits on our graph. All right, negative 2 times 0 plus 4. Well, that's going to be 0 plus 4, so 0, 4. Negative 2 times 1 plus 4. So that's negative 2 plus 4 is 2, so 1, 2. 
negative 2 times 2 plus 4. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 4 is 0, so 2, 0. And finally, negative 2 times 3 plus 4, that's negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, so 3, negative 2. Okay, now let's plot those points. Negative 1, 6 is right here. Okay, sorry, it's hard to plot points on this app, so they look a little bigger than they probably should. You'll get over it. Okay, plotting my points, plotting my points, noticing a pattern, noticing a lovely pattern. In fact, I bet you I can tell you what the y value would be for an x value of 4. I bet it would be negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that point because it continues the same pattern. What would the x value be for a y, uh, the y value, excuse me, be for an x value of right here of, what's this, 5? Five? 5 would be negative 7, is that right? Yeah, so negative 10 plus 4, oh no, negative 6, <laughs> sorry, negative 6, negative 6, all right, and then you're going to draw the line connecting the points, put little arrows on the end, and you are done graphing a function rule, and you are done with your video. A lot of information, come in ready to answer some questions about vocabulary so that you know you know it. See you guys in class.